Hi folks! Folks, when I started shooting this video, uh, I had thought that the Peerless 2317 transaxle I had had the same pin, spider, and side gear arrangement as all the other 2300s, and uh, I had figured that I was going to do a lock video of a standard 2300 and rip it apart and just do a quickie weld, you know, spiders to pins, slam it all back together, away we go. Now this particular model transaxle, the 2317, is the limited slip variant and I expected to see a preload spring or two in there and that's all fine and good. Um, however, you know, when I got it open it was a completely different arrangement. I had to stop and think about it. I had to do a little homework and I found out that the 2317 doesn't have you know, a pin and spider and side gear arrangement with a couple of preload springs. It's got a whole other animal in there. It's got like a planetary thing with 10 pinion gears, one preload spring, and it was called the Duo Track Limited Slip. So this particular locking method that I came up with, that I've, you know, affectionately termed the Dock Locker 3.17, 2317, 317, um, is specific to the Duo Track differential that appears in the Peerless 2317. And from what I understand, it appears in a few other models of transaxle here and there too. The duo track differential was not created by Peerless, it was a third party, for the life of me I can't remember who right now, and uh, will have appeared in other transaxles. So if you have a limited slip that is the, uh, the duo track, and it's got uh, you know a planetary arrangement with 10 pinion gears and a preload spring in it, a circular preload spring, then this video is for you. So what I have done here is I've come up with a weldless differential lock for the duo track differential that appears in the Peerless 2317 and other transaxle models. So once again, I've decided to call it the Dock Locker 3.17. Uh, generally speaking, you know, the differential locking methods that I come up with and, you know, refer to as Dock Locker just because it started off that way, utilize, you know, a straight live axle shaft you know i usually do away with the half shafts the differential assemblies the spiders everything just do away with it and boom live axle and we go from there because it's much stronger than the three quarter inch half shafts and spiders and crap that we see in your typical lawn tractor transaxle in this particular case um, you know it's got one inch shafts they're stronger than hell and the whole assembly is, is is supported not only within an iron case but you know multiple bearings and multiple support points this crap is so strong forget it it's not going anywhere so here you have it folks the dock lock is 3.17 anyways yeah she's supposed to be a limited slip which means we're going to find some preload springs in that differential assembly or should anyways all things being equal and uh, now the thing is, is when I turned the axle, I should have demonstrated this before I took it apart, but no big deal. Normally when you turn an axle shaft, the other one turns the opposing way, and that's how you tell you have an open diff. Uh, when I turn this one by hand, the opposing axle shaft would turn the same way, but in actual operation, the limited slip wasn't working. And I did a bunch of homework after I got this tractor, and I found out that the limited slip is pretty much failure prone. The uh, preload springs don't live very long and replacements are hard to find and if you can find them they tend to fail fast too. So as much as I got all excited finding out I had limited slip it was pretty much pointless. So we'll uh, we'll put the camera back in place and uh, try and pull the diff out. Well I'm gonna whip this diff apart because I'm dying to know. Then I gotta take a break and go paint a ceiling. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Planetary gears and that rounded spring there. Well, I went to move this thing to clean some of the oil off the bench and the whole damn thing fell apart. So, you know, that kind of answers my question as to how to get at the other side. Uh, it just comes off. And so what I did is I took the side gear off the one axle and dropped it in there just so I could have a look. And I've been staring at this thing for about the better part of an hour trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to do this. I've got a unique idea. 
I took a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal and I think 12 might do it or uh, rather 14 might do it but I had 16 gauge handy and if you cut 10 pieces to the right size and shape you could lock this without welding and I'll show you what I mean this piece is not deep enough but it is wide enough um, again this was just a slug I cut by hand just as a test and you can see that I bent a very slight curve in it and all I did was lay it out on a pair of ice grips whack it once with the back of my hammer and there's your curve and I'll show you why I did that my finger's going to be in the way for a second here and I apologize but let me just get these things aligned the way I had them there we go with everything aligned I'm just going to leave that standing proud for a second just so you can see and it's going to sink in. Anyways, you can see it. Uh, in position, you've got a void facing a void and a void facing a void and a void facing a void. And I did flip this over to, you know, verify that on the other side it was doing the same thing. I mean, it makes sense that it would, but I verified it. And if one were to cut 10 of these slugs exactly to size and shape and insert them in between all 10 of those spaces, um, the axle flanges would keep them from falling out. They can't go anywhere and they would jack the gears so that they can't turn. So you could do a weldless locker on one of these 2317s or anything with the same arrangement uh, just by cutting enough slugs of sheet metal and just sliding them in. So I decided to give it a shot and that's what happened. I haven't done the other side yet so I've got five more pieces to do but genuinely that did not take very long at all once I had it sorted out. And all that involved was piece of rectangular 16 gauge steel, one and one eighth by about three quarters. And I just did a little, you know, quick machining on the grinder just to make sure it fit. Now this is a flat piece and we did have to put just a little bit of a curve in each piece, just a little bit of a clearance curve. Otherwise, you know, it'd be just a little bit too tight to fit in, wouldn't fit right. A little bit of a clearance curve and just to double check once installed to make sure that it didn't stick up past this surface because that's where that axle flange is going to go and uh, that's about it so the object of the game is going to be the flip the sucker over do the other other side and reassemble in case anyone's thing. curious here's how I put the clearance curve in I've got a gap between the vice jaws of just under a half an inch is about three eighths and I just laid the piece across the gap and using the back side of my welding hammer, just a couple of taps in the middle, and turn it 180 degrees, so I'm getting you know both ends of it, and uh, you just end up with just a wee little bit of a curve in it. Hold on, let me. Sorry, I couldn't see where I was there. Just a wee little bit of a curve in it. That's it. That's all. A couple of taps. Done. Boom. Okay. So final size on those tabs was three quarters of an inch by an inch. Uh, when I was starting to assemble it on the bench, I forgot that this had a recess, so when I had it laying face down on the bench, you know, everything dropped in about an eighth of an inch. Uh, so three quarters of an inch by one inch of these plates. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the one axle half on there and then just flip the whole mechanism so that, you know, that half of the, you know, mechanism is held together and can't fall apart again. Because uh, it is a little bit time consuming getting these things aligned in the first place. <clears throat> okay, so this is where things get suitably interesting. Now, due to the fact that I've taken up most of the additional clearance in here, you know, I know darn good and well that, you know, it, it's going to be a little bit difficult getting this in there. Uh, let's go with the mallet. Now, in truth, that there alone should do it. I mean, nothing can turn at this point. It's, it's impossible. I've got half the assembly jacked. And, uh, you know, then, therefore, nothing can go anywhere. And I'll fight with this later. But, yeah, there we go. Therefore, nothing can turn. At this point, it's already locked. But, you know, over-engineering generally works out better than under engineering and I'd rather err on the side of over engineering and err on the side of caution so let's just put this in here and show you 
yeah see that's not even beginning to move or turn um, so that being said and all things being equal I'm gonna cut five more of those pieces and uh, just get the whole damn thing together like that brilliant I love it I discovered something quite interesting putting this side together and I'll have to flash back to an image from the other side just to refresh everybody's memories but you can see I've started fitting fitting the slugs in there now if you look really closely you'll notice that I can't find the piece that I just cut yeah brilliant Shit, there it is right there sorry if you look really closely you can see that the little bends that I put in the slugs are now facing away from the center right you know as far as the center is concerned you know they're convex and I do recall putting the other side together that you know they curved with the axle gear and I've noticed that putting this side together here just where the teeth line up is just too far into here for that to work so it's actually assembling with the clearance curve that I created with the bend facing the opposite way as it did on the other side okay Go ahead and pop that in. Lovely. Fantastic. Alright, so where we're at now. To remove that axle gear. This flange. Reassemble. Got this snap ring here. I don't know if I'm sufficiently zoomed out for you to see that. Apologize if I'm not. Let me just flip that around. Oh, we're a little low. There we go. Anyway, snap ring on top here. And boom, snap rings in. Get the little twirl to make sure she's set. Yeah, that's not going any place. Now this is where stuff's going to get interesting. I do know darn good and well it's going to be a fight going in there because I've taken all possible play and lash out of it. Just readjust that a little bit. There is there is no play or lash left in it. Uh, I do expect a major argument with this thing. Uh, I know that getting it started is going to be kind of interesting. Um, just going to try and keep an eyeball on where the teeth are. Oh, would you look at that? Went in smoother than a baby's behind. That was beautiful. I really, really expected to get a fight out of that. Okay, so that, uh, that is not going anywhere. Zero play in there. She's locked up solid. The only thing that could possibly make this any better is a one-piece solid axle shaft all the way through, which in my mind would truly qualify it as a dock locker, but uh, now this isn't going anywhere. This is good. Chris is going to be happy so, with it. So, as you can see, I've got her all back together. The <laughs> dock locker 3.17, as it were, on the Peerless 2317 Transaxle. Folks, I'm not afraid to admit to you that my first time tearing into a Peerless 2300 was an industrial strength pain in the ass. I, uh, I did have the manual, the Peerless Tecumseh Drive Systems manual, and I did look it over and I thought I had it, and I thunk wrong. Um, personally, I would suggest that before you attempt to tear into a 2300, before you attempt to tear into anything, you really should try and get the manual. Um, I did learn a couple of things along the way, such as proper disassembly sequence as well as reassembly sequence. Um, the flat aluminum transaxles like the 800s and the 900s and the MSTs, in my opinion, are a total cakewalk to put together compared to one of these things. Um, you know, with strength comes difficulty, apparently. So, anyways, we've got her all back together again. And uh, we're going to ship this off to Chris from Lawn Gone Tractor Shop. That's uh, Lawn Gone is his YouTube channel as well as his Facebook name. And uh, we're going to see what Chris does with it, what sort of use he puts it to, and wish him the best. And see how the Dock Locker 3.17 holds up.
Anyways, until next time, take care of yourselves and thanks for tuning in. and fucking reverse and throw the thing up. Son of a bitch. Uh, what not to do. Doc, have some coffee.